You're listening to Canada Reads American Style, the only podcast by two librarians from Michigan who love Canada Reads and Canadian literature. Welcome our hosts, tech guru, baker, and historical romance reader Shauna, and content provider, dog lover, and nonfiction and realistic fiction reader Rebecca. Hello, and welcome to Canada Reads American Style. I'm Shauna. And I'm Rebecca. Well, we are going to be talking today about something I think that's really exciting and very special. Uh, as you may know, Shauna and I have been really focused on Canada Reads and Canadian literature in a big way. But a wonderful challenge came across uh, our plate or whatever <laughs> and our computer screen. And we decided to participate. So I'm going to let Shauna tell you all about this really cool challenge. Yeah, you know, I'm going to consider it part of the American part of our name in regards to uh, since we are going to be participating with Native Americans. But uh, so the reading challenge is the 2021 Read Native. And throughout the year, we are to find books and read books and publications by and about Native Americans. Visit tribal websites, search peer-reviewed scholarly journals, visit Native-owned bookstores, and check with Native librarians for all of the best sources for learning more about Native Americans and Indigenous peoples from around the entire world. So some of the ways that we can participate is read of the each of the suggested categories and write the title of your choice on the line next to the entry. Now, that means that you can either keep track of this digitally on a, some kind of productivity board, your notes section of your phone, any way you wanna keep track of this, you go for it. The Read Native Challenge, people who are putting this on is the American Indian Library Association, which is a subcommittee of the American Library Association. And they are saying they have like this PDF that you can download. And if you take a picture of it, you can send it to an email address for a chance to win prizes. And uh, well, Rebecca and I have tried to contact the. uh... (laughs) Don't get me started. (laughs) We've tried to contact the owners of this competition to get more information for our followers and people who wanted to do this challenge with us. And unfortunately, we have not had any responses. So if you're hoping for the prizes, the prize is really the chance to grow your reading shelf in your mind. Yeah, I would definitely say it's all about stretching uh, your knowledge about Native Americans and and truly anybody who participates uh, in the United States, um, our original inhabitants often refer to themselves as far as we know as Native Americans or Indian. We do see that in the United States. I know in Canada, uh, it's Indigenous, First Nations. Um, that's the terminology in other countries. I'm not sure, you know, I know in Australia, uh, we had some Choice, uh, some titles came to us from somebody else who had suggested some native literature from Australia. So I think anyone who's listening to us can do this challenge for the original inhabitants of their own countries. So I think anybody can participate, which is really what's really kind of fun and exciting about it. But I really wanted to do everything I could to focus on uh, Native Americans in the United States because we've done a lot of reading on literature of indigenous people in Canada. And like Shauna said, you know, we're Canada Reads American style. So we're going to kind of throw in the American piece of it this year as we go through this challenge. So that's one of the things I'm kind of excited about, because honestly, I've read, you know, a handful of things really related to Native Americans. And I, my knowledge and my reading choices are, have been just so poorly limited. And I just think this is a great opportunity for me to dive into that. And I'm assuming, Shauna, you might feel the same way. Oh, yeah. And you know what? We are trying to get some help with recommendations for going through this challenge because there are 26 prompts 
and we will be posting weekly to talk to people and get some new ideas, new titles, get some different perspectives, get people talking about this challenge and helping each other out. I think it's really about discovering new literature in, in an, for those of us who have not done that in the past. So I, I really am excited about this challenge. And the prompts are interesting because the idea for us to post this and to try to get people to think about the literature and to, to make recommendations, we certainly will, as librarians, we'll do our own research as well. But we're really hoping that those of you who are uh, listening or who may be interested in this challenge, when we put those prompts up, if you've got some titles written by uh, Native Americans or Indigenous or First Nations people, we hope that you will, um, you know, put your titles in there. Because I have to admit, last weekend, last Saturday, I spent the whole day and I pretty much have the titles I want to read already identified, but changed my mind put out your choices, you know, let us know what you're thinking and uh, give me an opportunity to find something new that I'd be excited to read. Uh, I'm all, I'm all uh, up for that. Uh, certainly. Yeah. And I am a huge serendipitous reader. So if, if your title catches my eye, I am one of those people who I won't read what it's about. I'll just go based off of you recommending it. So I need a lot more help than Rebecca will because she, you know, went through and researched everything. Me, I'm just going to pick pick something out of a hat. Well, I have to admit, it was, I, as a nerdy librarian, it was the most, I mean, I'm serious. Like, I spent all day last Saturday doing it. And after I got to the end of the night, like it was nighttime, I thought, wow, I have done nothing but sit at the computer and look up titles for all 26 uh, pretty much, not um, I'd say a good 20 of the uh, categories because I already had read some of them already. But man, let me tell you, I learned a lot. I had a lot of fun. I recognize some Native American authors in the United States now. And there's tons of things I'd like to read, but I am pretty excited about the list I've chosen. And so when we, when Shauna puts up the prompts on our Instagram page, I will actually in the comments tell you which book I'm going to read for that challenge. So, uh, in fact, I think I already did that for the first one, which was true crime. I did pale faced lie by David Crow. He, that one sounds really fascinating because the challenge, and I'm just going to pull up my list because it specifically said true crime by a native author. And you can find plenty of true crime about Native American or Indigenous First Nations peoples as a subject, but to have it written by a Native author. So the one by David Crow is fascinating because apparently it's a memoir and he is telling this story about his own father and his childhood, which it sounds like his father was a criminal or I'm not sure if he committed murder, but that book sounded really fascinating. So I did put that one in the comments uh, on our Instagram page. But like I said, I had a blast just researching titles all day. <laughs> I did nothing. <laughs> I was should have cleaned my house, but I was like, nah, I'm having fun looking up titles. So I really enjoyed that as a nerdy librarian thing. Let me tell you, there are some on here that I know are going to be a little difficult to find some uh, titles about like a book about a Native American scientist. Or... Uh -huh. That one was fun. That was a, that was actually a tough challenge. Yeah, but I did find right? one for yeah, I did find one for myself. Yeah, and then another one I think is going to be a little bit of a challenge is a book about a Native urban experience. No, the book I have picked for that, I'm telling you, I'm not going to say what it is now. You're going to have to follow along. And when Shauna puts up that prompt, but I am telling you what, the book I picked for that one, I am so excited to read that. I cannot wait. Cannot wait for that <laughs> one. No, seriously. I, I, girl, I got it down. I've got some great <laughs> titles that I have picked that I, I have to say, I normally am not somebody who likes to pick what I'm going to read way far in advance, but that's why I spent all day really researching it because I wanted to pick books that I was really excited about. And that I'm going to be excited about four months from now when I, when that prompt rolls around and I'm going to read that book. Right. So I picked things that I really, truly am excited to read. And 
I do have to say my, I'm a slow reader. Plus I'm having a little difficulty with my eyes right now. I'm going to an opth or an optometrist and I got some issues, but I can't read right now a lot. So pretty much the rest of this year is going to be the, the books that I'm reading this year will be it for the challenge. So I might be able to throw a few things in here or there, but pretty much what I'm going to read the rest of this year will be books from the challenge. So I did want to explain that this challenge actually started back in December of 2020, and it's supposed to go through and end on December of 2021. So Rebecca and I, we've been talking about wanting to do this challenge, and but we wanted to get through Canada Reads first, and then I requested a break for a little while. <laughs> six weeks, six weeks. <laughs> Uh, so we, you know, we're ready, we're refreshed, we're ready to get going again. And, uh, so we have read a few of the prompts already because not all of them are based on reading. You know, there's a video with a native American storytelling, read a piece of legislature about a legislation by or about native Americans. So we have been able to tackle a few of the things that aren't necessarily on the, uh, reading portion of this list too much. But uh, so Rebecca does want to go through and tell you about her grand how many she's done so far. Da, 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 da. I've done eight. I've done eight so far, which when I told Shauna, she was actually kind of shocked. But when you hear what the eight are, you're going to be like, oh, OK, that didn't take that long. So but the first one, I actually did this back in January uh, because I really kind of wanted to kick off the and we didn't know what the Canada Reads books were going to be yet. So I wanted to sort of kick it off and get moving on the challenge. But as I've mentioned before, I'm not a big poetry reader because I don't always understand poetry. I think if it's obvious, I'm going to get it. But if it's really subtle, I even though they say, well, you're supposed to just go with the flow and, you know, picture what you picture. I, I don't I don't have that kind of a mind. I if I had to have a go to book kind of book to read, it's going to be nonfiction. I like facts. I like figures. I like, you know, just true stuff. So poetry is not my gig, but I read uh, When My Brother Was an Aztec by Natalie Diaz. And I have to say that after I finished the book, I felt that I understood 75% of the poems. So I was really, really proud of myself. I really liked it. I thought she was amazing. And I would highly recommend that book because if you're, if you're a great poetry lover, maybe you would be like, all over it and say they they're brilliant because she does they are very well reviewed uh her work is very well reviewed so i would encourage you if you love poetry read natalie diaz if you're somebody who's like me who's not quite as comfortable with it it's still a great great read the next book sean and i did together with a couple of our friends a book by a native author outside the usa I, for that one, counted The Tilly and the Crazy Eights by Monique Gray Smith, which was one of the Canada Reads long list titles. And it was a book that I really, really wanted to read because it was a road trip, older people, I wanted to read it. And uh, I'm, I won't say anything about it. We may talk about it later in the, in the future, who knows. The next one is a book, of course, pretty much if you're listening to this program because of Canada Reads, it was a Canada Reads book. It's a book by an LGBTQ plus native author. And we selected Johnny Appleseed, or I should say this is my challenge, Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. So that um, fit into that category. And then I want to say <laughs> the next one was a book slash class about a native language. And Shauna reminded me as librarians, we have access to mango languages through our public library that we run and operate and all that. And Potawatomi was one of the languages. So I took the first two, two lessons uh, because I actually kind of liked it. So I kept going and I did lesson two. And all I remember is, I think, um, Bojo, which is hello. <laughs> That's kind of the only thing I remember because it was hard. It was actually kind of hard, but I did pretty well. I did pretty well with both lessons. Sometimes I could totally remember how to say everything. And then sometimes I would get one or two words and I, I'd like blow the rest, but it was really fun. So that was a really cool way. So thank you, Shauna, for doing a shout out for our Mango Languages. And, and I was able to fulfill the requirement for that. 
And uh, don't forget to check your public library because although they may not have Mingle languages, they may have another language learning app or website that is available to you with the use of your library card. There are several different language companies out there that provide services to libraries. And don't don't forget to use your library card uh, in order to, you know, get those types of services. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was really fun. I actually kind of enjoyed it. And like I said, I did one lesson and I just kept going. So, um, but it was, <laughs> it's, I don't think I have an aptitude for languages. I think that's part of the part of the issue, but uh, let's see. The next one was, is an article by or about Native Americans. And I found this really interesting young woman. Her name's Sierra Clark. And she's a Native American who lives up in the Traverse City area, which is where Shauna is kind of from that general area. And she was, she graduated from college in the sciences, but then she said she really didn't like the way Native Americans were portrayed in the media. So she decided to become a journalist. And so the title of the article is, I didn't trust journalists, so I became one. And it was from June, 2020. So that article was really interesting. And now I'm kind of following uh, her on um, well, I requested to follow her on social media, but I think maybe that was her personal account. So I am going to check back for the newspaper that she writes for and occasionally see what she's writing about, because I thought that was kind of interesting that she changed her career path because she feels so. And, and she mentioned the I don't know what year it was. Maybe it was 20. No, it could have been 2012. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, it's when those ships came that were the um, replicas of the. Columbus ships. And she talked about that as a Native American and what that represented to her and her people. And that was actually really interesting. So um, that was a great article. I enjoyed that. The next one was a legislation by or about Native Americans. And to be honest with you, American legislation is really hard to read. I did just kind of look for something. And the one I picked was um, it was to amend the wa America's Water Infrastructure Act of 2018 to expand the Indian Reservation Drinking Water Program and for other purposes. And the reason I picked that one, honestly, was because Sean and I are in the Flint area. And as many of you may know, Flint um, had the water crisis here. So, and I understand in Canada, there's that whole issue with water issues in, in, in Indigenous communities. Uh, I remember Tanya Talaga talked about it as well when we interviewed her and in, so I just kind of wanted to read about something that I think is so critical to the health of people everywhere is clean water. So I read that. And then I did a video with Native American storytelling. This was kind of fun because this man's name is Pun Plamondon, Pl Pun Plamondon. And he's really fascinating because he was actually in the 60s, he was arrested for bombing a CIA office or something in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And he says in the story that he's telling, he, he says, I've never admitted whether or not I did do that bomb. And he even said, no, nobody, it was that building was empty. So nobody was injured, but he says, I've never said whether or not I did it. <laughs> so it makes me think he did it, but he, it's interesting because he was adopted out and he didn't really have his culture and his story. I think it went on for maybe like 12 minutes and I've really enjoyed his story. And he kind of started out talking about his native American heritage and then told a little bit about the 60s stuff that went on and then kind of wrapped it back up and tied that whole thing together. And he's fascinating. I think he's in his early seventies now. And I actually started thinking I would love to host him at our library for a virtual program, but I couldn't find any current contact information. So I don't know if he is still storytelling, you know, publicly. I don't know if he's still doing that, but I really found his story fascinating. So I love that. And then the last one is a food book slash cookbook by a native author. And most cookbooks always have a lot of meat. Uh, recipes in it, and I don't eat meat, so I thought, well, I'm not going to read a cookbook. So what I did instead, this was wonderful. There's a children's uh, picture book. It's a, an award-winning book called Fry Bread, A Native American Family Story by Kevin Noble. And I'm not sure if it's Maillard. I'm not sure if that's how to pronounce it. He's also Native American. And he, he tells this wonderful story about fry bread and what it means in indigenous and Native American culture and how fry bread can be different, whichever 
group your wherever you're at geographically, it can be completely different. And, and he explains all that. He has a recipe at the back that was a recipe from his, one of his aunts who was really like the fry bread uh, maker in the family. And he said, usually it's a woman that takes on that role in the family. But he, after both his aunts were gone, they kind of passed it on to him. And he is now that person in his own family. And it's a wonderful picture book. The illustrations are wonderful. The, the story about the bread and what it represents in, in the families, you know, Native American families. It was, I loved it. So to me, that was a great food book. So I highly recommend that. And we will put all of the links. Well, not the legislation because nobody cares about that. Probably nobody will read that, but we'll put the links to some of the books I'm talking about here in the description. So, so anyway, that's what I've done so far. Da -da. <laughs> Well, I only read uh, four books, and two of them you've already mentioned. So, gosh, the other one? Which are, which ones? Tilly, Tilly and, and Johnny, Johnny Appleseed. Johnny yeah. And okay. But what category did you put them under? Because you they'll fit in different places. So did you decide where you wanted to put those in which category? I did not. Nope, okay. not yet. Um, I did do a horror book. By a native author, Ooh. and uh, it is more of a children's book, but it totally creeped me out. So I'm classifying it as horror. <laughs> and it is. What was it? What was the Skeleton title? Man by Joseph Bruchak. Oh, Bruchak, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. oh man, that was it was so creepy. But uh, I I got through it. Well, I have to laugh about the horror one because I really don't like horror. I don't read it. I don't want to read it. I don't watch scary shows. But the book I checked, I picked for my horror, let me find it. Hold on. Give me a second here while I find, where's that category at? Da, 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 da. Oh, here it is. I picked, <laughs> it's called This Town Sleeps, a novel by Dennis E. Staples. Because when I read the description, it's like mystery. And it sort of said like, like light horror. So I was like, I'm going with that. So that's going <laughs> to suffice for my horror because I don't like to read that stuff and I don't want to, but the book sounds fabulous. Oh, good. So that's why I'm reading that. Yeah. Well, if it gets yeah. too, too scary for you, you can do Skeleton Man. It's not too scary. It's just creepy. So <laughs> yeah, I just don't like that. I don't like to read that kind of stuff. That scares me too much. Well, I just want to mention one other thing really quick just to see what you're going to do about this. Because one of the books, I mean, one of the categories says a book by a native author from your tribe. Okay, well, I don't have any, as far as I know, officially, I don't have any Native American blood in me. Uh, my family, half of my family is uh, pretty close to, we thought it was sort of like 100% Hungarian, but my sister just did her DNA and it's like 38%. So I'm thinking, I'm going with my tribe is Hungarian. And so I did pick a, a really great classic title uh, from Hungary because I figured that will suffice for that category for me. So I don't know. I know you do. I think you do have Native American um, lineage in your family. So do you know possibly a, what tribe you might be associated yeah, with? Yeah, I'm not sure. That part I think I'm going to have to do some research on. I mean, we did some DNA stuff in my family too. And uh I'll have to just jump in and look at uh, the results to see, because the, not enough uh, Native people are doing the DNA thing, so it's not subcategorized yet. It just says Native oh, still okay. um, when we were doing the percentages. So I want to say, like, I can't even express it, so... Because the story in my yeah. family is that it is my great grandmother, so it's actually relatively close. Uh. <laughs> but you know, there's that wonderful map. There's that native, or I mean, indigenous map that I think. So I think I feel like it came from Canada, but it covers all of North America, and you can zo you can close in on your area, and it will tell you what basically what. Native American or what groups lived there. It's really an incredible map. Okay. And so you probably, at least if you know kind of where your grandmother, great grandmother grew up, then you could just at least pinpoint it that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to probably do some research on that before I actually make a decision because it is important for me to know about it. And it's probably high time that I get more involved in 
figuring out my family history kind of deal. So, yeah, I mean, we're all getting older and I have the skills to do it. So why not? Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. So that's why I say I just picked, I thought, you know, I can't even, I mean, there's, I thought to myself when they created the challenge, I assume they meant for everyone to participate, not just Native American readers. So it's sort of like, that's kind of an odd question, a book by a Native author from your tribe, unless they kind of meant it like the way I'm approaching it, which is my ethnic background is Hungarian, half of it's Hungarian. So I just sort of did that. So I don't know. We'll see if I get, we'll see if I, once I filled it out and I turn it in and I get my prize, we'll see if I, if that disqualifies me from my prize. <laughs> And I, and I just want to say one thing, you know, if anyone ever from the American Indian Library Association or ALA hears this podcast, so if somehow they ever hear it, just know that we are so sincere that we love this challenge. We are so excited about this challenge and we just want to help get the word out. So we wanted to interview somebody from the organization. We wanted to we're, and that's why we're going to spend the rest of this year really highlighting it. So you're going to see a lot of it you know, all about it on our Instagram page, because we just think it's an awesome challenge, you know, and we, so if anybody from ALA or AILA um, ever hear this, please reach out to us. We would love to interview somebody. And, uh, and I will tell you that I will certainly try to reach out to some of the authors of books that we're going to read and see if I can't get some of them to talk to us about it, because uh, I just think it's a really exciting way to spend 2021. And totally. And, you know, we have a lot of followers or listeners from around the world. And you, the great thing about this challenge is you can make it your own. You can read about the Native people of your lands. So I know recently we had some downloads from Russia and it's just like, that's really cool. So we did create a hashtag. So if you wanted to follow along and find other pictures or get recommendations from other people, the hashtag is C-R-A-S, Read Native 21. And that obviously stands for Canada Reads America Style, Read Native 21. And then we are also uh, tagging the at Read Native 21 uh, challenge, which they have an Instagram page. It has a couple of posts on there that says they have pictures of the challenge and I think access to a website, but uh, uh, we provided the, we will provide a link to the PDF so that you guys can have access to the prompts, the 26 prompts, and we hope you enjoy doing this with us. Yeah, and I will say too that we, they have a website, they have a website, they have an Instagram page, and they have a Facebook page, and I have joined I mean, I've looked at the website, certainly, and, and uh, joined both the Instagram and the uh, Facebook page, but nothing, no, no reaction so far. I just think it's a little bit odd, and I don't mean this in any way disrespectfully, but it's like, we want to help promote this, so, you know, please, please, please. Share, tag, hashtag. <laughs> yeah, everybody flood the AILA and the ALA, American Library Association, everybody let's flood them and say, come on, come on, we want to make this a bigger deal. Because I kind of feel like it's not getting enough attention. And so I don't care if they want to change it to read native 2122. <laughs> I'm all over it. I'll keep I'll keep reading. But we really we really hope that, um, you know, that we can get some some of you to join us on this uh, journey, because I think it would be a lot of fun. And we'll learn amazing new things. We will all learn new things, which is the point. Right. Right. Yeah. So don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and tell all your friends about Canada Reads American Style. Bye.